parents steal my $120 to spend on my autistic sister, ruining my 16th birthday party. Here's what happened. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell for notifications. I, a soon-to-be 16-year-old female, don't get to celebrate my birthday every year because my parents can't afford it. I got myself a summer job months ago and saved money for my sweet 16 birthday, since my parents won't be doing anything for me this year either. My birthday is next week. Yesterday, I discovered that my mom searched my room and took the $120 I had saved and hid under my bed, like she always does. I called her and she said she was keeping it safe and we'll talk after she gets home since she and my dad and my my autistic 14 year old sister were out. I waited till they got back and my sister started yelling cheerfully telling me to look at the new sneakers my parents got her. I asked my mom for my money but she said she spent it on new sneakers for my sister. I was like what? My dad said my sister saw, liked, and wanted the sneakers, but they didn't have money to buy it. So to stop her from having a meltdown in the middle of the store and refusing to leave the store without them, they ended up buying them for her. I angrily told them that money was saved for my upcoming birthday party. He promised he'll pay me back next month. Then I can have my birthday party and invite friends over. I told him my birthday isn't next month. My friends will laugh if I tell them I postponed it. He replied that I should reconsider who I'm friends with then. He is a short temper, and I obviously pushed him to his limit when I said no and kept asking them to return the sneakers. He loudly said no, and I lost it and said that they're both thieves and I hate them for stealing my money and ruining yet another birthday for me. He yelled at me and said, no, you're getting on my last nerve and I ain't gonna take any more of your crap. No more. No birthday party for you. Not next week, not next month, because of what you just said. And and you're grounded. Now get the F out of my face and stay gone till I tell you otherwise. Mom just looked at me sternly approving of his message. I ran upstairs and dad shouted after me that I was way out of line and need to be taught some manners for calling them thieves to their face. I'm grounded now for calling them that. I didn't get my money back, but I did get called an overprivileged spoiled brat for having little to no consideration for my sister's struggle and acting so selfishly and throwing a three-year-old tantrum over a party that they're no longer allowing me to have because I called them thieves. Am I the jerk? No, you're not a jerk at all. Your parents had no right to take that money. You went ahead and saved that money that you worked hard for so you could enjoy your birthday, since they're never able to really give you a decent one. It's not right for them to just go ahead and take it, and then spend it on your sister because she's going to throw a tantrum otherwise. If they never have money, then they should be used to this kind of thing, and still not have bought her the sneakers. Instead, they caved, because it wasn't their money they were spending. It didn't have the same value to them that it did to you. You had set it aside for something special. Honestly, it's not your parents that should be talking about respect. They need to be learning some themselves. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. The story submission link is in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe. Some jerk working at the airport tried to steal my personal belongings. So about two months ago, I went to Cuba with my mother. It was an all-inclusive trip, so everything was pretty much provided for by Sunwing. Whenever I travel, I like to bring with me this cute 500 milliliter glass water bottle with this rubber pink casing that I got while I was in China. Normally, this bottle wouldn't be an issue. There would be a few odd times when security at the airport would check it to make sure it was empty because it was clearly over the 100 milliliter maximum, but they would all let us go without a hitch. When we were traveling to Cuba, the bottle was checked and given back to us on our way there, but on the way back is a completely different story. There were tons of people flying out of where we were the same day as us, so there were like 200 people waiting to check in at only three check-in counters. When we finally checked in, it had been about two hours since we got there. We were pretty tired from standing, so we wanted to get through to the gates as fast as we could, so we took the shortest line in security. There were two people working at each bank check area. At ours, there was a lady looking through the screen displaying the x-ray and a guy in charge of checking suspicious banks. When we put our bags on the conveyor belt, the lady began gesturing to her partner and pointing at the screen. The guy then proceeded to grab my stuff off the belt on the other side and asked us if it was our stuff, to which we replied yes. He carefully shuffled through the bag, but really just went after the water bottle because that's what I assumed the lady pointed to on the screen. 
The following dialogue is to my best recollection. Is this your water bottle? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna confiscate this because it's against the rules to bring this on board. But it's empty. Yes, but it's over 100 milliliters and that's against the rules. I'm confused at this point, but didn't want to make a scene and get kicked out. No, that's for liquids. No, it's for the size of the bottle and it's glass. But we have this bottle and that's also glass. This bottle indicates an 80 milliliter bottle of hot sauce we brought. That's under the 100 milliliters, so it's allowed. At this point, I wasn't sure if he didn't know the rules or something, because every time he answered, he sounded very unsure. Can I see where it states that I cannot bring an empty bottle over 100 milliliters with me? He grabs a nearby plaque that labels prohibited items and points to a wine bottle. But that's not allowed because it's alcohol. No, because it's over 100 milliliter glass bottle. His tone at this point indicated that his real intentions were that he wanted my water bottle, because he's really just grabbing arguments out of thin air. At this point, I'm just trying to test his nerves. So if I had a 100 milliliter glass bottle, bottle of alcohol, I could bring it with me. No, because it's alcohol. So it is that, referring to the plaque. Do you want to take the cover off the bottle before it's sent to be destroyed? He handed the bottle back to me to remove the casing. Keep in mind, there was some more bantering back and forth, basically saying the same thing over and over again. I was really ticked at this point. I really liked that water bottle, and it was clear that the only reason he was confiscating the bottle was because he or the lady wanted it. So I took the water bottle from his hands, he gave it willingly for me to take the casing off, but since the only problem he seems to suggest it has is the size of the glass, I can take everything else. So I stared into his eyes as I removed the lid from the bottle and handed the rest back to him. His face instantly became red with anger and he aggressively threw the rest into the disposal bin. I have no use for the cap or the casing, but now that jerk has no use for the bottle, and that's all that matters. You know, I don't travel a lot, but I'd like to hope that this kind of thing doesn't happen all the time. Initially, my comment was going to be that maybe our original poster was overreacting, and that that wasn't really the case, and they were kind of taking it more personally. But given the guy's reaction when they took the cap away and everything, it does sound like that's what they were trying to do. Are, are we serious here, though? It's a water bottle. You're really going to do something like that? Take someone's water bottle just because you want it? That's such a grimy move. Just go buy your own water bottle. Don't be holding up everyone in line because you want to go through someone's luggage randomly because there's something you might want in there. That just, ugh. My manager said no phones at work and to give everyone her direct contact information. So everyone started calling her. I work in healthcare where phones are not to be used while on the floor caring for patients and things like that, for privacy and WHS reasons, which is fine and understandable. Most of us have our phones on us or in the break room and don't use them unless on break or away from patient care areas. None of us check our phones while busy and if they do, we'll always get called out for it by other staff. We were all recently in a meeting where we were told we're no longer allowed to have our phones on us, as it's a distraction and against policy, meaning not to be used unless we're out of the unit or off hospital grounds. A few people piped up and said they had young kids in care where their phone was the direct communication for the carers, or there are issues at home that they needed to have their phone to have quick contact if needed, even if it was left in their handbag and could only be checked on breaks. Not only that, but we have a half hour unpaid lunch break where we should be able to use our phones as we see fit. But this was also denied, as it's still in a healthcare setting and could cause WHS issues. Now, I know working in healthcare and personal mobile phones don't mix, as it really is against policy. However, the issue with denying us complete access was a total overreaction. The issues with requiring quick and direct contact with home or other outside work contacts was brushed off, and we were told if the issues were that bad at home, we shouldn't be at work. Many people were a bit taken aback by this, saying a lot of the time home issues are resolved by a quick text back and not allowing us to access our phones while at work was a bit unreasonable. Our manager said that if that's the case, we can give people her direct work number and for contact to go through her, and she'll relay the message to us or give the phone to us to talk to whoever's calling. So you know what happened next. We all gave our homes, spouses, carers, schools, etc. the direct work line to call for 
for any reason if they're unable to get in contact with us directly. And the phone started ringing continuously. First was a lady whose husband needed approval for a big financial decision at home. The next was a vet calling to tell a co-worker their dog needed to be put down. I got a call from my children's daycare saying my son had been bitten and was bleeding. Mandatory reporting policy. There were several other phone calls within the span of a few hours with my manager running to find us to relay messages or pull us off the floor so we could speak to the callers. Wasting way more time than if we were allowed to shoot a quick text or take a quick phone call while on our breaks. The next day, we were told we can have access to our phones while on break and to please tell our home contacts to stop calling the manager's phone. It took a few days for everyone to get the message, meaning there were still many unnecessary calls coming through, but it made it obvious that the need for communication lines to be open at home was important. I really don't know what to say to this one. I think it's pretty obvious what the result was going to be. People need to have some kind of contact with the outside world. You can't just cut them off. It sounds like for the most part, everyone was being very responsible with their phone usage while at work. This was just a step too far, completely unnecessary. And of course, when a stupid manager puts a stupid policy in place, stupidity ensues. Again, anyone else could have saw this coming a mile away, but a manager with a manager attitude needing to up the efficiency just seems to be blind to the fact that people actually have lives. God forbid you need to text your kid for five seconds. My downstairs neighbor will not stop calling the police on us for making too much noise. Our rental contract, as is normal here, stipulates a quiet period between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. every night, where we're not supposed to be loud. We moved in on a Saturday, and we're of course unpacking on Sunday. So our new neighbor below us knocked on our door and screamed at us around midday, and told us to read the part of our contract about the quiet period. So I did, and Sunday Sundays aren't mentioned. 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. every day of the week. Nowhere does it state that Sundays are any different, so we carried on. He's called the police on us several times for just doing normal things such as rearranging furniture. Each time, he lied to the police that he had come to talk to us about it first, which he had not. The reasons included things like dropping things too often and using the stairs at night. These reasons are, of course, ridiculous, but each time, I've just shown than the contract which all residents sign. If he signed the contract, he consents to me making noise during these periods. We complained to the letting agency that he was harassing us for simply making the normal amount of noise people make from living in an apartment. However, nothing changed. I checked with our neighbors to see if they had any complaints about our noise level, and they all said no. After he called the police several times, I decided something had to be done. I went down to the neighbor with a copy of the house rules which we've all signed, and told him to please read them, specifically the exact times which are the quiet period. Then, for the next week or so, any hammering, drilling, or other loud things I had to do, I saved for 9.50 p.m. Even if I didn't have anything I needed to do, I made sure to make noise right up until 10 p.m. After I did this for about a week, we stopped hearing from him, and haven't had any noise complaints since. And it's been several months now. Now, a couple of heavy metal fans had moved into the apartment next to him, and I couldn't be happier. If he's specifically referring to the quiet period, then he should know what times those are, and understand that you're allowed to make noise anytime you want in between. Especially if you're just moving in and stuff, of course there's going to be some furniture moving and things like that. And yeah, people drop stuff. Anyone who's ever lived in an apartment knows that, yeah, you can hear a lot of what goes on upstairs. There does need to be some level of respect, but this sounds like this guy was just taking it overboard. You guys are just making the normal amount of noise someone would make. Entitled customer insists I reopen the restaurant just for him. I've been working at a Subway restaurant for the past two years from the end of high school through my first year of college. I take classes in the morning and afternoon, so when I work, it's usually a closing shift, only working 15 hours a week. I am a full-time student after all. The only issue is I close by myself, so it really toys with my anxiety whenever I get a rush or can't finish off certain duties by a certain time. 
So by the end of the night, I'm usually so out of it mentally and just want to get home ASAP. We close at 10 o'clock. So tonight, I was closing like usual and I really wanted to get home as early as I could to finish an assignment due at midnight. So of course, with my luck, it ends up being one of the busiest nights we've had in a while because they recently sent out coupons for BOGO footlongs after 4pm. Such a dumb move, especially for alone closers. So by the time 10 rolls around, I'm finishing up the dishes, cleaning the line, counting the bread, wraps, bowls, etc. and I go to lock the door at 10. And as I'm turning off off the open sign, a guy walks in, and I tell him, sorry, we're closed. He wittily responds, oh, then how'd I get in here? I respond, I was walking to lock the door right now. You have to leave, sir. No, I want a sandwich. At this point, I'm just thinking if this guy's ballsy enough to tell a business worker to stay open after hours because he wants service, then I don't know what he could do. So I decide to make him his sandwich just to make him go away. He proceeds to take a good two to three more minutes just just staring at the menu. I was fuming. Every dagger imaginable coming from my eyes was hitting his stare. I make his sandwich, then we move to the cash register. I go to put in the sandwich, tell him his total, and he pulls out a $50 bill. Holy crap! I get so excited, because we can't accept bills over 20, and I pray he doesn't have another method of payment. I tell him the bad news. He, of course, gets angry, saying to break it anyway. Well, good thing I just dropped most of the money from the register into our safe before I went to lock up, so I literally couldn't give him proper change for the 50. I explain this to him as I slide his sub to the side where he can't reach it, and he just leaves in a fit of rage. I proceeded to then take that sub home and eat it whilst finishing up my assignment and turning it in on time. Honestly, if he wasn't such a commanding jerk, I would have just gave him the sub and told him not to worry about it. But if you're gonna force me to do my job past our posted hours and be a jerk about it, you're not getting a break. Again, anyone who's worked in retail or any kind of customer service has dealt with this customer. They don't seem to understand the meaning of we're closed and that you're literally unable to serve them. Maybe the cash registers are closed. Or like you said, you've already deposited all the cash into the safe and are unable to give change. Maybe you've already turned off the ovens and everything for the night and packed up all the lettuce. You're supposed to undo all that just to make them a sandwich because they couldn't get their five minutes earlier? That's not your problem. It happens to everyone. You're late sometimes. Just accept it. Come back tomorrow and try again. I told my family if they don't stop trying to set me up with someone, they'll never see me or my daughter again. My wife passed away suddenly after giving birth to our daughter five years ago. My parents and sisters have spent the last four years telling me to move on. I can't. You know how amputees get phantom pain in their missing limbs? It's like that, except it's everything that's missing. I took my daughter to a street performers festival in my city, and my heart ached because I went to buy some kettle corn. I I hate kettle corn, but my wife loved it. I was buying something I hate for someone who isn't there. My mother did the cruelest thing I can imagine. She told my daughter that she should ask for a new mommy for her birthday. I wasn't polite in dealing with that. I told her that if her or my sisters ever tried to bring a woman into my life, I would leave the city with my daughter and they would never see us again. Now, all three of my sisters and my father have called me to yell at me for threatening my mother and them. They they say that they're only trying to help and that I'm a jerk for not accepting the inevitable. First of all, I'm very sorry for your loss. That's not an easy thing for anyone to deal with. It really does sound like you cared about your wife a lot and you guys had a great relationship. That's not something that's necessarily easy to replace, especially when you have constant reminders of her and your child. It sounds like you've already got a lot going on. If the interest isn't there, there's no point forcing a relationship because anything you do try and do isn't going to be heartfelt. If you're not giving it you're all, then it's not really worth it. It really sucks that your family doesn't seem to understand what you're going through, and I'm sorry that that's the case. But if you need your space and they can't accept that, then maybe you just need to take that space. My daughter ditched her siblings and cousins at the zoo when they were all supposed to be there to spend time together. I have three kids, 7, 8, and 10. 
and my sister has two, seven and ten. We went on vacation together recently and we took the kids to a zoo that also had a few rides. The kids went on the rides while my sister and I got coffee nearby. We told them to meet us at a certain table when they're done. My eight-year-old came to me much earlier than her siblings and cousins. I asked if the ride scared her and she said no, she just skipped the lines. I asked for clarification and she said when there was extra space on the ride, they asked for single riders to come up to the front. So she did that for all five rides. I told her the point of her going with her siblings and cousins is to have fun with them and that it was selfish of her to leave them so she could cut the line. I told her I understand why she doesn't have many friends if this is how she acts all the time and she started to cry and ran to my sister. My sister ended up buying her ice cream and said that I was too harsh. She told my husband and he's mad at me for speaking to her like that. Am I the jerk for calling my daughter selfish? I'm just gonna open this with, if the fight's between you and an 8 year old and you're not sure if you're the jerk, you're probably the jerk. They're 8 years old, they just don't know any better. It's perfectly understandable that the kid just wants to get to the front of the line and ride the ride. Is it a little selfish? Yes. But the comments you made just went way too far, especially about her not having any friends. I understand that there's a lesson you're trying to teach here, but this is an 8 year old child. You're eight-year-old child try to do it with just a little bit of sensitivity when you subscribe make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories linked at the top of the description and if you like am i the jerk give am i the genius a shot linked in the description as well either way thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you guys next time